Why do Catholics worship Mary? Part two, today on Made for Glory. On an earlier episode of Made for Glory called Why Do Catholics Worship Mary, uh, one of the questions that I brought forward is the question, where would you be without your mother? And then looked at that in light of Jesus. Jesus, who of course we believe is God, but God who is incarnate, becomes flesh, becomes man in and through Mary, so that Jesus receives his humanity from Mary. And it's in and through that humanity that he saves us. And he continues to reign at the right hand of the Father um, in glory in his humanity, which is an amazing thing. So that Mary, as the mother of Jesus, is truly the mother of God. So when we talk to Mary, we have a conversation with her, when we esteem her and honor her, we are esteeming and honoring and talking to the one who is the very closest that you could possibly be to God because, again, the Word became flesh in and through her very body. Um, so kind of building on that, and a lot of the responses that came up were interesting um, on the internet, as, as you can imagine. A lot of them had to, were basically asked the question, well, where is that in the Bible? Where is that in the Bible? And, and where are your biblical references? And though I did make several biblical references, a lot of those um, weren't really considered in, in the responses. So I just wanted to kind of take that question a little bit further. First and foremost, uh, the question, why do Catholics worship Mary? To say that we do not worship Mary. And again, I will repeat it. We do not worship Mary, that we don't think that Mary is divine, uh, but we do think that God has a unique role for her um, in the plan of salvation. And to set that aside is not honoring God. Um, many people think that, that somehow if we recognize Mary's dignity and value as Jesus's mother, that we're somehow diminishing God, which is crazy because God is, is the, the great artist. He's the great creator of everything. So to marvel at, at an artist's greatest masterpiece doesn't diminish the artist. It actually uh, exalts the artist. So when we look at Mary and we recognize the glory of God radiating through her humanity, through her, um, through her femininity, through her very body, her very person, that she magnifies the Lord in the words of the Magnificat and, and Luke's gospel, um, it's actually giving glory to God. So I, I, I invite us to maybe kind of reassess that when we look at other creatures and we recognize their beauty or worth or dignity, that doesn't tear down God. That actually uh, recognizes how good our creator is. And God is the creator of Mary. And we can say that she is our masterpiece. And one of the ancient prayers of the church that she is one of the solitary boasts or the solitary boast of the human race. Um, the one who said yes to God and we rejoice in that. But going back to scripture, going back to the Bible, because a lot of people want to say, you know, where is our biblical, uh, where is our biblical faith in light of people's devotion to Mary, Catholics devotion to Mary? And do we give her too much honor um, or worth? And, and I want to point to something called typology. A lot of times people, when they say that um, they want like chapter and verse for, for the Bible, they don't recognize how the Bible is written and oftentimes how it's read, even within the Bible. St. Paul does this several times where he references an Old Testament story and talks about how those stories, which are historical events, that they, in a sense, foreshadow, prefigure our types of what is to come or what is fulfilled in and through Jesus Christ. We see that throughout the, the New Testament. We see it throughout uh, the Old Testament, and especially when we talk about Mary. In Luke's gospel, um, when Mary is approached by the angel Gabriel and he says to her, Hail, full of grace, the one who is completely full to the fullness of her being with grace. Um, and then announces God's plan to her, God's plan that she would be the mother of God's son. And when Mary asks, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man, the words that the angel uses are very, very important for us. Because again, they, they, they point us back to the Old Testament. He says that the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. Overshadow. And that word overshadow, actually, um, it's interesting because Luke writes in Greek. And the Greek Old Testament, which is what Luke would have been using, the Septuagint of the Old Testament, that word overshadow only happens one time. And it's in reference to the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, which was God's dwelling with his people, where the glory of God, after it's constructed, uh, everything's placed inside the Ark, the glory of God descends upon the Ark of the Covenant, and God is with his people. Of course, they end up, end up eventually building the temple around the Ark of the Covenant. It is the Holy of Holies, it is God's dwelling. So what's amazing there is that is Luke is intentionally using a word, again, used only once in all the Old Testament, that overshadow word, to describe what happens to Mary. The glory of God, the power of God, overshadows her, and then now all of a sudden Mary becomes the new Ark of the Covenant. 
So one of the types, one of the things that Mary points to uh, in and through the biblical narrative is that she is the new Ark of the Covenant. So we talk about Mary when we approach Mary, again, because of what the Ark of the Covenant contains, which is the very presence of God. Mary contains in an even more real way than, than what the, the Old Testament Ark of the Covenant was prefiguring. She actually has the very presence of God within her body. So when we approach Mary, it's one of those great mysteries and joys. This even happens in the book of Revelation at the end of chapter 11. In the book of Revelation, all of a sudden the Ark of the Covenant is unveiled in the sky. All of a sudden, um, uh, this uh, this Ark that had been lost for so long is seen. And then in the very next scene in, in, in Revelation chapter 12, this great sign is the woman that is clothed with the sun that is giving birth to the Messiah, the one who is destined to rule over God's people. So just one more way of, of looking at uh, the narrative the story about Mary, our devotion to Mary, our love for Mary, our esteem for her comes from the Bible, comes from a reading of the Bible that is consistent with the way that the Bible reads itself, which is, which is typology. So I invite you to take a deeper look at the Bible, both the New Testament and the Old Testament. When we talk about Mary, Mary who had this, this distinctive honor of being the one uh, who said yes to God's plan. And because of her yes, God entered into this world. And through his entry in the world, through the incarnation, he saved us and set us free from our our sins. What's up, YouTube? Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like, to comment, also to subscribe, and make sure you click that bell so you can know when we have new videos that are coming out. And if you want to support the great work that's happening, please click on our Patreon uh, button down below. We'd love for you to partner with us. Thanks so much. Have a great day.